We finally have it! Huge confirmation on AMD's Ryzen 10,000 CPUs. I am really getting excited for these. But before I get to that, we have next-gen memory, Nvidia is gearing up for their new supercards, and the first review for AMD's new GPU. Welcome everyone to Gamer Mel. Okay, it's news time and first up for today, DDR6 has just been made official and it comes with a massive boost in performance. As you can see right down here, the JEDEC, which is the Joint Electron Device Engineering Council, which is the global body that sets the standard for DDR5, DDR6, all of those, and they just published their JESD209-6. And as it states, this document defines LPDDR6 the next generation memory design. And it's the first official spec that actually mentions DDR6. Now, according to this, LPDDR6 delivers improved performance with greater power efficiency and enhanced security and reliability. It's been five years since the group introduced DDR5, so they had to do something awesome, and in fact, they did. As you can see here, DDR5, what it does is it splits up the 64-bit channel that was used in DDR4 into two independent 32-bit sub-channels. Well, LPDDR6 improves this by taking four 24-bit sub-channels, and this results in lower latency and higher concurrency. They also lowered the voltage requirement for the memory, and they deployed additional power-saving features. So, what does all of this do? Well, as it states, LPDDR6 will have a data rate between 10,667 and 14,400 megatransfers per second. Now, given how fast DDR5 has gotten, that may not sound all that impressive, as they state here, the current overclocking record is 12,054, but for one, keep in mind that's an overclocking record. That's not, you know, just normal spec that it would come with, but keep in mind that this is actually over double the spec of DDR5 when it was initially announced in 2020. And just like DDR5, the performance of DDR6 will get faster as time goes on. Either way, this is great news for PCs everywhere. And next up for today, it looks like Micron is set to join NVIDIA in making RTX 50 series memory. Now, this may not seem all that interesting, but there's actually a couple awesome things we can learn from this. But before I get to that, this is the last day to check out Micro Center's Tech Day sales event. And you really want to see this, because they flat have some incredible deals. And they sponsored today's video so I could tell you all about it. Like the fact that you can pick up a Ryzen 7 9800X3D for just $399 right now. That's the cheapest I've seen it anywhere. Plus, you can save even more with their bundle that comes with a very nice motherboard and 32 gigabytes of GDDR5 6000. And don't forget that 6000 is a sweet spot for Ryzen 9000. Now, if you can't make it in time, their back to school savings event starts this weekend. And if you've never been to a Micro Center, you've got to go, like right after you watch this video. Because Micro Center is the one place you can go in person to get all the parts you could want for a PC build. I'm talking talking GPUs, CPUs, motherboards, they have it all, and it's at a great price. To top it off, Micro Center's Santa Clara store in California is officially open, so if you're in the area, you've got to check them out. To see all their awesome deals, check the links out down in the description below. Now back to the story, as you can see right down here it says, Micron is reportedly joining the list of memory suppliers for NVIDIA's RTX 50 series GPUs. According to Benchlife, citing sources close to board partners and the supply chain, Micron's GDDR7 memory will be offered alongside existing chips from Samsung and Hynix. This development would expand NVIDIA's options for memory sourcing as it prepares for broader deployment of RTX 50 series GPUs. Basically, what this means is that NVIDIA is gearing up to release more supply of their current RTX 50 series cards, meaning there's going to be way more cards out there and therefore prices should finally start going down. Cards that aren't currently at MSRP hopefully will be. We shall see about all of that, but basically this is good news, but it actually 
tells us something else. As you can see, this one directly comes from video cards, and it says that their sources also indicate that GDDR7 memory availability will be a critical factor for NVIDIA's planned RTX 50 Super Refresh. These upcoming models are expected to use 3 gigabyte memory modules instead of the current 2 gigabyte ones. And that right there is the key factor in this. Basically, instead of having to make major changes to their current gen lineup or they're having to add a bunch more memory modules to give it more memory and stuff like that, instead they're taking the same ones and just switching out the 2 gigabyte ones to the 3 gigabyte memory modules. That way they can have more memory while still keeping a very similar design. Not only that, but this also tells us that yes, Nvidia is very much gearing up to release these GPUs. They're making the partnerships required to do that, and they are definitely kind of vamping up how quickly they're able to do it and get these out. Of course, we have been hearing rumors lately that Nvidia has in fact upped when they're actually gonna release these to an earlier date, thanks to AMD's GPUs and how well they've been doing, and that definitely does look to be the case. So these should be coming and coming soon. And next up, if you remember, AMD recently announced a new GPU, the RX 9070 GRE. Well, we now have our first review of that card from Computerbase, and I'll be honest, it's not that great. As you can see right down here, we have average rasterization performance at 1440p. And when we compare it to the 9060 XT, you can see that it is a bit faster, but Looking at the 9070 XT, it's significantly slower. In fact, it's just over the 7900 GRE's performance here. So, yeah, this really doesn't look all that great, especially when we look at last gen's memory, it comes with 16 gigabytes, while the 9070 GRE only comes with 12. Meaning, as to how good this is, it's pretty much completely gonna boil down to price. Moving over to ray tracing performance, you can see here it's still just barely above the 7900 GRE. And compared to the regular 9070, it's just significantly worse. Like I said, it's really gonna boil down to price. And so far, as you can see right here, the 9070 GRE is priced slightly higher than the RTX 5060 Ti 16 gigabyte model. And when we look at the performance there, you can see that it is quite a bit faster in both rasterization and ray tracing, but we're still talking 16 gigabytes versus 12. All in all, it looks okay, but like I said, I'm still fairly disappointed. And lastly for today, we have what's essentially official new information on AMD's Ryzen 10,000 CPUs, though we still don't know for sure if that's what they're said to be called. Either way, this story originally comes from One Usmus. Now, you might be wondering how this could be labeled official, but One Usmus has worked directly with AMD for years because he's the developer behind the clock tuner for Ryzen and the new Hydra software. So we know that he receives engineering parts from from AMD, and according to him, engineering samples have already been distributed. This is likely why we saw ADA64 recently add preliminary support for Zen 6, which is of course the architecture that makes up Ryzen 10,000. Either way, he further elaborates on the new parts he received. It said, this won't be a revolution, it will be an evolution. Now, don't freak out here or anything because he's clearly talking about the architecture itself. This makes me think that the recent rumors claiming the IPC increase would likely be around 10% is probably probably true, but as you'll remember, IPC isn't the big thing for this generation. And this is where he further goes on to reveal the big one. He says there will be more cores per CCD. And this of course means that the leaks were spot on. We are in fact getting more cores for the first time in generations. So far, rumors have pointed to CCDs coming with 12 cores instead of eight for a total of 24 cores instead of 16. And he goes on from here to say, and instead of a single memory controller, there will be two. Details are still scarce. And as far as what he means by that, as you can see right down here, it talks about the two memory controllers that they mentioned, that one who's missed doesn't really know the details about it, but 
one configuration could enable support for higher memory bandwidth by splitting requests between two controllers. Users may also expect reduced latency and higher performance scaling, and maybe, just maybe, AMD is set to support DDR5 CU DIMM memory. So we should receive significantly faster memory next generation, but not only that, he ends it stating that Hydra support won't be an issue. So this further proves that he absolutely does have Ryzen 10,000 CPUs. Either way, this is getting me more and more excited for next gen. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for Ryzen 10,000? And what do you think about AMD's new GPU? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to check out Micro Center's new deals. And as always, have a great day.